In preparation for my solar panels, I built a mounting stand for them. I guess I got a little carried away. It's huge. Um, turned out I decided to make a pavilion over our patio, and it, it combines function as a patio cover and as a stand or holder for these solar panels. Here you see the two large solar panels I've got. These are Kyocera solar panels, each capable of generating more than 200 watts when in direct sunshine. And I've got them mounted with steel mounting hardware and brackets um, in a way that should survive even a very strong wind. Let's take a look at them from the bottom. They're not yet wired up, so you'll, you're going to see the wires just hanging loose under the bottom, and then we'll show you the details about how we wired up and the associated electronic equipment to charge the batteries and invert the resulting energy into 115 volt, 60 cycle AC power that's compatible with all the things we have in our home. Stepping outside of the house now, I immediately enter the patio that's covered by the patio cover we talked about. Here's the uh, general tour of it, and uh, starting at the end that's farthest from the solar panels. Now approaching the solar panels, they're up in a corner, in the sunniest corner I could find. Eventually I hope to have maybe as many as 16 solar panels here, but right now I've just got these two in the corner, capable of generating together about 400 watts. And, uh, You can see you know, how they're, they're almost invisible. The neighborhood won't really see them because of the way I've got them mounted. Um, ideally, if I slanted them a little more, I could collect a little bit more energy, but I'm trying to uh, respect the aesthetics of this nice neighborhood. So there's my patio cover, and the two solar panels are in this corner walking beneath them, of course, we can see them. And see those wires that are coiled up there? Those are the standard kinds of wires and connectors that one can expect when buying a modern solar panel. They are compatible with one another, so I can connect them in series by just hooking the male and female cables here. And then with standard, uh, readily available cables, I can string uh, the power to my charge controller, which is over here. I'm going to run wires this way, down here, then into this gray box where I mounted a charge controller. The charge controller will have wires then going down into a storage battery and up into an inverter. All of that equipment is in these boxes which we are going to open up and show the wiring presently. Five minutes later I've now removed the weather tight panels covering the charge controller and the inverter. The heart of our system, at least the heart, the heart of the electronics, is the charge controller shown here. This box will receive the energy from the solar panels there in the background and convert it to direct current compatible with the storage battery that's down there. And so there will be a series of heavy wires entering down here through these holes in the bottom, bringing energy in and then coming back out again, leading down to the battery. This lower box contains the inverter. I decided to mount it on an angle like that so that I have good access to, and I can see the switches and controls and outlets. And um, I eventually will add some additional weatherproof outlets here in the side. But his job is to take the DC power out of the battery and invert it into 60 cycle AC power. Should be able to deliver as much as 2000 watts continuously, um, which is going to be compatible with the appliances and equipment I have in the house. So. That's, those are the four main components of a solar system. The panels mounted to collect sunshine, the charge controller to convert that solar, uh, solar panel DC into 12 volt DC and monitor the current to start into the battery, and then the inverter to reconvert that back into useful electrical power compatible with our house. Now, the, the um, charge controller still has a security panel on the outside of it. We'll be removing that in a minute to show the innards and the wiring as I wire it up. Sixty seconds later, I've removed the four screws from the safety panel on the charge controller, and here's what it looks like inside. This electronics is pretty smart stuff. It knows how to care for a battery and make sure it doesn't get overcharged. It knows how to monitor its own temperature and make sure that the uh, 
Electronics here doesn't, doesn't overheat, adjusting according to the amount of energy available and the amount of charge needed by the battery. The battery connectors are going to come through this hole and they'll hook here to this label, this terminal labeled battery positive and the negative light leaving battery will go to one of these two labeled common or negative. Um, but finally this last connector will hold the uh, positive wire from the photovoltaic cells and the negative wire will go to one of these commons. So we'll use these holes to do that and wire it up. Of course this requires a lot of, uh, of attention to safety. The battery has a lot of energy in it and uh, anytime I'm wiring a, a car battery or a storage battery like this up, I have to be aware that it can deliver a tremendous amount of current. I want to be careful that, for example, it doesn't short out across my ring because that would fry my finger. Or I don't have a metal watch band for the same reason. Be very careful about that amount of energy. Secondly, the photovoltaic cells, they're delivering energy whenever there's sunshine hitting them. So the final connection will not be made until dark. I'm going to wait until it's dark, which makes it safe to take the uh, series connected photovoltaic cells and wire them to that final little bit. So I'll do that later tonight. Not while the sun is shining. I don't want anybody to get fried in this operation. We are very pleased that so many people are finding our content on YouTube. However, if you are using only YouTube to explore these clips, you're missing out on a lot of the best information. Please join us at AskMrWizard.com where you'll find this clip, all of the related clips easily located, along with related text, illustrations, and advertisements from vendors that sell related equipment. You'll also find forums where you can ask and receive answers to your questions. Your support at our site keeps us going, and we appreciate it. Thanks.